Hello friends, and welcome to the Shoe Sanctuary, a place where we love shoes, perhaps a little too much. My name's Ed Budd, and I'm going to be reviewing today the latest iteration in the New Balance Beacon lineup version 3. Sometimes sequels are great improvements on the original versions, and other times they're just poor facsimiles of their once triumphant past. Is this going to be a yay or a nay? Let's just hope it's not a John Wick 3, hey? Before we get into the initial review, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below if you like running shoe content. Also, it really helps the channel out if you give the video a thumbs up like. So today's initial run in the Beacon 3 was 7 miles, 1.5 miles of warm-up, an easier pace for me, around about 8 minutes per mile, which is roughly about 5 minutes per kilometre. And then a 4 mile section, which is about 6.44 kilometres, at 7 minutes per mile pace. That translates to about 4 minutes 21 seconds per kilometre. And then some warm down of around about 1.5 miles, again at about 8 minutes per mile target pace. So 5 minutes per kilometre pace. Couple of stats for you, the Beacon's got a six mil drop. I got this in a UK size 11 and a half, which is a US 12 in New Balance sizing. And it weighs in at 267 grams, which is 9.4 ounces. Just to let you know, I did buy this shoe with my own cash. It's not been sent to me or anything, so it's my hard earned earth credits go into this one. So you get my honest opinions. I won't be trying to pull the wool over your eyes or lead you down the primrose path. I certainly don't have my rose tinted spectacles on, although they are slightly red. So upper first, slightly more rigid heel section in the beacon here. It reminds me of the New Balance 1080 V10 that I reviewed a little earlier in the year when times were a lot colder. Certainly the flare feels good. It kind of felt like I was putting my foot into a shoe that I'd worn before, like a pair of well-worn corduroy trousers. But alas, the fly in the ointment was a little bit of rubbing on the outer ankle area on my right foot, right about here. It was the top section here, it was just rubbing just underneath the ball of my ankle. I didn't even notice it until I got to some slower paced efforts towards the end of the run. So I think I might have to opt for some slightly longer socks if for any future outings in this one. It does feel a little bit like the extra eyelet placement caused a bit of the issue. It's just a little bit further down here than you'd normally expect to have it. Perhaps it was causing the upper to be a little bit too close to my ankle. Might be able to avoid that issue on future outings with a bit of a lace change up perhaps. The upper certainly does have some similarities to the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. It's actually quite transparent, although it doesn't really appear that way when you first take the shoe out of the box. It's certainly got that same kind of vibe as the 1080 V10 and the Fuel Cell TC in terms of that transparent mesh. Really is quite a nice light upper. It's just a light shoe in general really. There's a nice amount of padding on either side of the ankle here, kind of reminiscent a little bit of the Alpha Fly and also the next percent. If you imagine the padding in the heel on those two shoes, it's not far off here. The typical beacon tongue, not too much, not too little. I do recall having a girlfriend at one point and her mum was a dinner lady and she always used to load loads of food onto my plate. And I felt really rude to say no. And then I felt really rude not to eat it all as well. It kind of feels in some running shoes that you get a little bit too much of the tongue there and you just don't need it. This is just the right amount to keep you hungry. Certainly the toe box is really lovely on this one. It reminded me a little bit of the Pegasus Turbo 2. Ample in size and depth. I experienced no heel slippage here using either a normal lacing system or the runner's knot. I like it when you talk about the runner's knot because people who aren't runners are like, what, what's he talking about? I've never heard of that before. What's the runner's knot? The New Balance N seems to provide a little bit of structure to that very, very light upper. I think there's just a light enough nature about the upper for almost any type of run in this shoe. You know I like a versatile shoe. You could certainly take this shoe out on long runs, shorter recovery type runs. I ran at a nice fast tempo today, not far off my target half marathon pace. So a very versatile shoe. So with only a slight bit of rubbing on the very outer section of the heel here, I'm gonna give this for my initial review a 2.8 out of three for the upper. It's time to talk midsole. So on first inspection, this version three of the Beacon does seem to have a lot of similarities with the V1, but the midsole pattern here, and in fact, the whole pattern on the outsole is very different. It's firm, 
but cushioned. Nowhere near as squishy as the Nova Blast, but a little less dense and more forgiving, in my opinion, than the React in Nike's Pegasus 37. The midsole is pretty much the outsole here. New Balance call it ground contact fresh foam. Although I have received a bit of information from a couple of viewers suggesting that it's actually Fresh Foam X in here. I'm not so sure. I'm really not sure about this, whether the, it is Fresh Foam or whether it's Fresh Foam X. So I'm just gonna take it on merits of my run today. Getting the Beacon 1 and the 3 in hand, I've gotta say that they do feel exceptionally similar in terms of the midsole. So if it is Fresh Foam X, fair enough, but in terms of the feel, it's similar to the first one. Shout out to Nick Jones, for the info. Interesting to see, Nick, if it is Fresh Foam, if it's Fresh Foam X, I'm really not sure. I can't tell much difference in hand. Certainly though, the midsole's got some real snap. I really enjoyed that higher pace section of my run today. In fact, when I got up, I felt really worn out this morning, but I was energized by the sight of the UPS delivery chap who bought these rockets for me to try out, despite running into a headwind on my way out. I got up some paces close to my half marathon target pace and the feeling was really quite effortless, very enjoyable. There was a segment of my route today that I PR'd on. I've probably run that segment 200 odd times and today I was exceptionally quick. Make of that what you will. I have to say though, this shoe felt really great at higher paces and at lower paces. It can do pretty much everything for you and you know that I really love that in a shoe. I'm super lucky, get to try out all of these shoes, but if you're looking for one shoe that can do lots of things for you, I think you may have found it in this one. Certainly your legs are feeling really, really good after that run. So very promising signs in terms of the midsole here, regardless of it's Fresh Foam or Fresh Foam X. I'm gonna give this three out of three for the midsole. So as I mentioned, the midsole and the outsole are kind of one and the same in the Beacon 3. There are five strategically placed rubber sections on the outsole. They're a little different in terms of shape and size than those on the Beacon V1. Not sure if they're the same on the V2, I don't have that shoe. Maybe if you have that shoe, you can chime in in the comments. But certainly the pattern here on the outsole is very different to that on the V1. Three here in the sort of forefoot, midfoot section, and two on the outer side of the heel. The gurus at New Balance have suggested they've placed these in optimum positions to reduce wear and improve durability. I think they got it spot on in terms of the rubber here in the forefoot. I think the idea is there, it's where you push off as you come through your gate and you're pushing off. That's gonna improve the durability massively. They do seem a little different in terms of the rubber that's been used to that on the V1. I found these superb on road, a rock magnet on gravel. I did get quite a few rocks caught in this smaller kind of sections here and a tad slippery on grass. So on the majority of my run today, traction was very good. There are a few wet areas. We have had a little bit of rain here and they seem fine on the water soaked gravel. I found some really great push off from this shoe. Really did find it easy today to increase the pace and the cadence. So will this shoe hold up to rough and rugged terrain? Hope it doesn't fall into the same category as the Rincon, one which feels really great and is a very light shoe, but it wear down very quickly. Some people suggest most of it's aesthetic with the Rincon, but I did feel a lack of pop after a while in that shoe. Even after one mile, I am starting to see some wear here in terms of these pods. They're starting to tear up a little bit and not in a little Richard way either. I think my route's a little more demanding on shoes rather than just simple road running. There are some paths, there's some gravel, there's some mud, there's some grass. I'm leaping over bits of trees occasionally. So hard to really judge as of yet, but if they do hold up in a similar fashion to the Beacon V1s, then I think probably a 2.4 out of three for outsole is a reasonable score. Just taken off a few points there that I think it is gonna wear down relatively quickly. And it was a little slippery on some of that wet grass. And people run a lot on fields and grass around here. So that's something we need to take into consideration. Last category today is value. So I picked these up for a clear 100 pounds, direct from New Balance. If you're a student, you should look into using their 20% off. Makes an even better deal. So that makes these 10 pounds cheaper than Nike's new Pegasus 37. 20 pounds less than the Asics Nova Blast and 40 pounds less than the Hyperion Tempo. They're even a tenner cheaper than Reebok's Run Fast 2, although you can probably pick those up in a deal and get them for about 80 pounds. I'm gonna put it on the line and say that I think this, along with the Reebok Run Fast 2, are amongst the best 100 pound shoes that there are going right now. Great, ample, upper, 
firm but fair midsole and outsole. Some good grip there if you're on road. A very versatile shoe at loads of different paces. A good all-rounder, this one. Although it's no beefy, this isn't a Botham. The first thing I said when I put these shoes on was, a just like the Fonz. So from now on, this shoe will be known as the Fonz. I think the shoe's kind of like Fonzie as well. I certainly bought this as a kind of secondary character, a secondary kind of daily shoe. One to kind of sit in the background, but already it's risen to the very top of my estimations. This one's gonna be great for pretty much anything I throw at it. I can feel it, and I don't need to use the force to do that. Just like Fonzie, really, whose character was a secondary character, but very soon rose to the top of the popularity stakes. Top-notch value here, guys. Let's not beat around the bush. This is a do-it-all shoe, and for me, I'm gonna give it three out of three for value. Maybe some black laces could be incorporated here to represent Fonzie's black leather jacket. So that gives us a score of 11.2 out of 12. That's a big score, but a worthy score for a great shoe. If you've got any questions, comments, opinions, thoughts and views, please place them in the comments below. Quick musical interlude for you. Hey, I've dug out this awesome album called Fonzie's Favourites. I'm not sure how they've managed to cram quite so many tracks onto it. There are 24 tracks on this album. They're all recorded at quite a low volume to actually get them on the disc. Favourites on here though are Johnny Preston's Running Bear, Let's Twist Again by Chubby Checker, Blue Suede Shoes by Carl Perkins, and To Know Him Is To Love Him by The Teddy Bears. And you get two versions of the Happy Days theme tune, so what more can a runner want? The awesome thing about Fonzie's favourites is as well, it's got this cool pull-out piece that you can actually stand Fonzie's picture up in your house and you can see him every day. What oh, a legend. I hope you enjoyed the video today, guys, as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you're enjoying the content here on the EdBud channel, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It really does help the channel out if you give us a thumbs up like too. And make sure you share it with your running buddies or other people that enjoy running shoes and sneakers or trainers or daps. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Hey guys, Ed Bud here. That's seven miles in the Beacon 3s. Literally the guy delivered them. I opened the box, put them straight on and came out. So I've got a bit of a problem with the right foot where the cut of the ankle collar is, is cut right into my ankle. Woman just went by on a small moped. Not sure what's going on there. Maybe a lack of oxygen. Okay, Burmaster, a bit of a shout out for you. It was definitely a day for the two-in-one Nike shorts. Very chilly today. Glad I wore the t-shirt as well. Wind was uh, exceptional. Uh, on the outward, on the way back, it wasn't quite so bad. Right, let's get back to the studio. Clear footage for Tim Gross here. Just standing on the bridge, Tim, that overlooks Penmill Station. Very quiet at the moment. I think there have been a few trains running, but very, very quiet.